you're looking into the eyes of a man in a huge amount of pain. I won't show the full picture because this channel is PG-13, but if you saw it, you'd see that his mouth is skewered by a spike, like this, in through both sides of the cheeks. It's pretty hard to look at, so consider this a content warning for whoever clicks on the link in the description below. He's voluntarily participating in an extreme ritual as part of the festival of Taipusam. It's celebrated by Tamil Hindus in southern India, Sri Lanka, and Malaysia, though most of the data I'm sharing in this video come from the island of Mauritius in the Indian Ocean. Taipusam honors the Hindu god of war, Muragan, and although the festival entails a bunch of different rituals, such as collective prayers and dances, a major part of the festival is called the Kavadi Atam, or the Burden Dance. On Mauritius, this is a national holiday. Men will start by piercing themselves with needles through the tongue, broomsticks skewering both of their cheeks, and dragging chariots the size of cars with chains hooked through their skin. Others will walk on shoes made of nails while they carry an altar on their back. They will then complete a pilgrimage to the local temple of Muragan where they can put their burden down and remove their piercings. Now, quick disclaimer. Remember one of the basic tenets of religious literacy is that religions are internally diverse. These rituals are specific to Tamil Hindus, but I'm using the extreme rituals of the Kavadiyatam as an example of a much broader phenomenon. Extreme painful rituals span all sorts of religions. Some Shia Muslims cut their backs and heads with swords on the day of Ashura, a day to commemorate the martyrdom of Hussein ibn Ali, the grandson of Muhammad, and some Filipino Catholic Christians will whip and crucify themselves on Good Friday. But it's not immediately obvious why extreme rituals that involve a great deal of physical and psychological trauma would develop in the first place. Common sense tells us that people try to avoid pain and hardship. So why do extreme rituals? Are there any benefits in participating? Let's turn to the research of the anthropologist Dimitris Zigalatas, one of the leading experts on extreme rituals. Zigalatas has conducted field work both in Spain and the island of Mauritius, and he's found that, counterintuitively, extreme rituals actually promote pro-social behavior and bonding within communities. In one study, Zigalatas interviewed Tamil Hindus on Mauritius, simply asking them, why are you doing this? And they had two two main answers. First, as fulfilling a vow in exchange for favor from Muragan. But the second reason was focused on the community, specifically how participating would bring recognition or favor to their family and community at large. The Kavadiyatam is indeed a communal experience. Friends and family help to build the altar that the men carry, and the altar is often kept in the house or the yard as a reminder. So he hypothesized that there must be a social aspect in participating, and another experiment seems to confirm this. He set up a mobile lab in Mauritius and surveyed people immediately after they participated in Kavadi Atam rituals. He wanted to test for pro-social behaviors, so he paid them a chunk of money for participating in the study but immediately asked if they'd like to donate a portion of that payment to charity. And he found a direct relationship between the reported painfulness of the ordeal and the amount donated. The more pain devotees felt, the more money they gave to charity. What's interesting is that he also observed greater rates of charity among people who were simply observing the painful rituals, those who didn't engage in the rituals themselves but followed closely along in the pilgrimage. We can see this social aspect of extreme rituals in other cultures too. Another experiment that his team conducted in Spain found similar results, but focusing on the physiological responses. People in the village San Pedro Manrique celebrated a yearly firewalking festival where participants run one by one across burning coals in front of a large audience. He equipped both participants and audience members with high precision heart rate monitors to determine the physiological effects of the whole ritual. And although the participants claimed to be calm while crossing the burning coals, the heart rate monitors found that their heart rates were around 200 beats per minute. In fact, two-thirds of the participants exceeded the conventional safe maximal level of heartbeat arousal. But here's the kicker. He observed that the heart rates of the spectators synchronized with the heart rates of the firewalkers. In fact, the synchronizing was strongest between close loved ones. If you were watching your spouse run across the fire, your heart rates were in sync. 
In fact, Zygalatas found the relation was so strong that we were able to predict people's social distance simply by looking at the similarities between their heart rate patterns. So what we're seeing are the biocultural effects of extreme ritual, which may explain why humans have done them for thousands of years. Extreme rituals not only work to synchronize people on a physiological level, but they also work on a social level, boosting prosocial behavior within these groups. Other scholars have corroborated this, calling it a martyrdom effect. The more suffering you're expected to go through in a ritual, the more committed you'll feel towards your group. But moreover, people observing their fellow community members going through extreme rituals feel a sense of empathy and bonding with that person. All of this follows the theories of one of the founding scholars of religious studies, the sociologist Emile Durkheim. Durkheim theorized that religion is born out of collective ritual, an effect that he calls collective effervescence, a sort of emotional electricity that flows through people participating in ritual together. Modern research like this has increasingly corroborated Durkheim's theory as a mechanism explaining why and how religious ideas and rituals continue generation after generation. Although common sense would tell us that people would avoid extreme rituals and that these rituals would die out after a generation, we actually find the opposite is true. Extreme rituals signify your commitment and obligation to the community and subtly work to strengthen the group's bond. In other words, for many people, the long-term social benefits outweigh the short-term pain. If you'd like to learn more, watch my full interview with Dr. Zigalatos. Link is in the description below. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. So we see that people who are uh, who are, are of lower status within the community, therefore they have a greater need to enhance their status. They put more needles in their body. They participate more frequently in the Kavadi. Uh, they carry larger uh, structures, which is part of the Kavadi ritual. It's a very heavy burden that you have to carry in a long procession. Mm -hmm.